Well, awesome. Well, as you were coming in, I had the chance to kind of meet a few of you, and it was, uh, it was you know, nice to make a, a little bit of an introduction, and I appreciate that, because I hope what we accomplished today is something that's, that's a bit interactive. And I'm going to take you through uh, an experience of mine having grown up in the 80s. I love 80s music. This is, this is going to come out. You're going to see that. But to hopefully encapsulate what I have entitled as the opportunity that you have to reinvent yourself. And so I just jotted down a few names as you came in. So let me just see if I can do this good um, or well. Uh, so this is Lisa, right? Andy? Okay, very good. Bryson? Brandon. All right, where's Bryson? Okay, there's Bryson. So I got Brandon and Bryson mixed up. Um, Mia, yeah? Okay, very good. And so I will try to remember names as we go, um, but as part of our experience today, um, I hope that as you volunteer and, and, and speak up, that you'll just, just state your name so that it kind of help make that connection as we, as we talk in dialogue. Um, Dean, thank you for that. And uh, let me get started here by sharing with you that there are some pop quizzes throughout this presentation. And so if you are able to answer these correctly, I have just a little gift for you. Now, I'm going to need some help, and I'm going to enlist Noah and Ethan, if you will. Uh, there will come a time where I ask for the name of the artist and the song, both. And so if you'll help me by identifying the first hand that comes up and you the second hand. Because if the first hand doesn't get it right, we'll give the second hand the chance, all right? So the name of the artist and the song, the title of the song, okay? All right. What if we can sing? Then you can take the microphone and come right up and uh, sing right along. Okay. All right. This first slide I'm going to show you, this picture was taken in 2005 during the funeral procession of Pope John Paul II. Um, that is down the corridor there at the Vatican. Now look at this slide. It is the announcement of Pope Francis's election in 2013, just eight years later. What, what's the major differences? What do you see? One, two, one, two, A, B, like your eye doctor. What do you see? The technology in eight years has changed. In fact, if you look close enough on this first picture, you're going to see this one phone right there. And it's a flip phone, no less. I'm sure there were cameras invented at this time, but look at what we've done with technology in eight short years. And this is just one example of that. Um, now look at this chart. That is the growth curve of technology uh, that spans the last 600 years. This line right here today is nearly vertical. I mean, we have here the telescope invented, the steam engine, the light bulb, telephone car, and so on and so forth all the way up. This line is almost straight up. With every passing month, there is some new cool technology that's invented, right? Um, so in a world that is changing so rapidly and technology reinventing itself every four to six years, how do you remain relevant? How can you reinvent yourself to retain relevancy and maintain a sharpness that will make you highly competitive in a highly competitive environment? So to help illustrate this, I've brought along an example of how music has changed over the last several decades, okay? Specifically, how we carry our music, all right? This is a picture of my dad's 1962 Bonneville. It's a Pontiac, bon Pontiac Bonneville. And we're caring for it while he's on, a, on an LDS mission. And uh, a song that you might hear on this Okay, I saw one and then two. Okay. Okay, what song is it? Very good. All right. Pass that guy. Very good. So, somewhere circa 1950s, right? Okay. Um, that's how we carried music around, as we listened to it on the radio. And if your car was mobile, your radio was mobile. Okay. 
All right. Fast forward another four to six years and we have this super cool invention, right? The transistor radio. One, two. El Paso. Oh no, there's a fire in my Johnny Okay, you got it. Okay, pass it along. What is it, Dean? Johnny Cash. Yeah. Ring of fire. I, I kind of like, we might listen to this one a little longer then. I'll watch the time. We have till what, 12.30? We gotta get to the chorus. Come on, Andy. Ring of fire. There you go. That's good. We need to get a microphone out here for you guys. All right. Very good. Very good. Now in the 70s, we moved to a much more portable platform for carrying music. You don't even recognize this. I bet half the audience doesn't even know what this is. This is an 8-track tape. This is an 8-track tape. This is President Wyatt's very own copy of Donnie and Marie. I borrowed it to, from him last night. No, I'm just kidding. That's the 8-track. Commit this to memory. This is a music artifact. You, if you would like to touch it later, you, you're welcome to. 8-track um, tape. Good stuff back in the 70s. There's one. What do you think? Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. He's, 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 he's uh, back at Vegas right now. He's playing at uh, Caesars. Okay. Crocodile Rock. Very good. All right. Now, although they were invented early, earlier, um, long player records, also known as LPs, or vinyls became really popular uh, in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, uh, this, is, this, this was a great era of music, of course. Being a child of the 80s, I'm a little biased. Anybody recognize this? All right, give it a shot. What is it? Give it to her. That's awesome. Congratulate. That was not a, that was not that uh, easy. That's air supply. Lisa. All right. Andy, can you can anybody can Ethan, can you can you help us out? All right. He probably could do the whole thing actually. That's awesome. Um this is my album of uh, Billy Joel's Glass Houses, um, and again, I, I brought this. Uh, this is this is a classic, and this is the this is a true true vinyl. Um, you know, music lovers today claim that vinyl LPs produce the best sounding music of all time. If you don't believe me, ask Professor Stillman. Is that not true? true. It is very true. And if you've not been to his office, you need to go. He's got. He's got a record player in there. It doesn't look quite like this, but it's pretty similar. And uh, you gotta love Billy Joel. Yes? Piano Man. This is good. This is good, isn't it? Yeah. You, you, so remind me of your name. Mark. Mark, how far should we go? You, when, you, when we're done, you raise your hand when we're, when we're when we've gone enough into the song to get a fill of it. Okay. Okay, come on, come on, Andy. Here you go. <laughs> it's not a mic, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, that's good. Are we all right, Mark? We'll, we'll go on. All right, now, now we're at uh, another way that we would carry music. The cassette tape, right? Oh, I think I actually brought my... Yeah, I sure did. There it is. There's my Journey tape right there. Oh, and some of the best songs of the 80s actually are from this album. Stone in Love. Oh, come on. If this, you got, you're exactly right. Is, is this not good or what? Now, 
perhaps that's not the song that you were expecting to hear. Maybe this is the one that you were thinking of. <laughs> Do you know that this is the number one uh, karaoke uh, cover song in the world? Everybody plays this. Everyone sings this. The next time you're at Disney and you go down, they'll be playing this. They'll be singing this. And people will stop and listen because it's just compelling. The lyrics and the music, it's awesome. So, did I see any hands on the song? Did you see? Did you? I didn't see who it was. What was it? What's the name of the song? Don't Stop Believing. That's right. That's right. And this is how we, we, this is how we would listen to music on the 80s. Boys and girls, this is a boombox. You probably you know, haven't seen one real, in real life before. Um, if you were lucky, your boombox would have a record button on it. And with that record button, you'd put your own cassette tape in, right? And you'd record the, musics, the music that you liked off the radio. And you'd have your own little personal cassette tape of your favorite, favorite uh, uh, music. Um, and these advancements are happening every four to six years that I'm taking you through. Um, and if you were really lucky, you owned one of these. Sony Walkman. There's my Sony Walkman from the 80s right there. I'm not sure that it works, but uh, again, these are artifacts. If you'd like to say that you touched them later, you're welcome to look at them. Um, this may be a song that you would have listened to. Oh, I need to get some new hands up. Let's try here. He was second? Who was first? All right. Okay, I want to spread it out a little bit. I got some big music fans in here. All right. Who are we listening to? Anybody from the back row? No, close, close. Back row, back row, right here. Yeah, what's the song? Yeah, yeah, that's right, okay. Now fast forward another four to six years and we have a new medium of music, right? The cassette tape, the C, or excuse me, the, 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 the cassette disc, the CD, right? This became the most convenient way ever to carry music. I mean, it was just awesome. Um, I didn't think there would be an invention as cool as the CD. Um, this was the first time that you could skip tracks with the push of a button and not go fast forward, you know, with the t this was an awesome invention. I, uh, and and uh, this is how you would carry the music, Discman. is with a Sony Discman, right? Now, the limitations of the Sony Discman. Um, you had to sit with the music player on your desk, right? Like, and have your earbuds on it, and you couldn't like move, and you'd have to type, and you couldn't, you couldn't jostle the, the Discman, right? Because it would skip tracks. I mean, there's no way you could mow your lawn in that thing, right? With that thing on. So, um, that, that to me, that was the first generation Discman there. Um, now, let's see here if I've got a... Oh, she got it. That's right. If, there, if, no, if the 90s are known for anything, they're known for the boy bands, right? Uh, maybe Celine Dion, but it was mostly boy bands, right? Okay. Notwithstanding, can I, can I just say that the music of the 80s was way better than the music of the 90s. And I don't even think I have to be that biased in that statement, although I am. All right, okay, now move forward another four to six years. What do you, what do you think is gonna sh be shown next? Oh, oh I, I did already, the iPod. So the iPod is that next way that we began to carry music. Um, so, but, but back in this day, we would download the digital file and create a playlist which during this era might include songs, you know, like from Nickelback, Black Eyed Peas, Usher, Green Day, One Republic, any of those sound, they all sound familiar to you. Over the next five years, the MP3 players became smaller and smaller and smaller. An iPod shuffle in the mid-2000s could hold hundreds of songs and might include music from Paramore, Fall Out Boy, or this artist. Ah, did you get, I wasn't watching. Okay, Colorado Rockies? I saw them in concert two months ago. These guys are awesome. 
Yeah. Did everybody know, right? It's killers? Okay, you got it. Okay. All right. Now today, we don't carry our music around because we don't really even own our music. Instead, we stream the music that we listen to at the very moment that we want to listen to it in the cloud and on demand. Can I just tell you that Spotify is the best 10 bucks I spend out of my bank account, bar none, <laughs> month to month. And the player? What's the player? Any device. Any device. Um, just like, oh, let me see, I may, I may have one more. <laughs> I know the real music fans in here. Let's hear from you. Oh, he phoned a friend. Pass him a bar. That's right. Yeah, very good. Well, just like music and the players on which we listen to it, has been reinvented every four to six years. And I just took you from Elvis Presley to the top billboard charts. You have seen a reinvention every four to six years of how we, how we have portableized music. And it's been reinvented. And many of you have come to this university and you've had to reinvent yourself. The core of who you are has not changed. But hopefully your, your perspectives have and will continue to change. So where do you begin? I mean, where do you begin this reinvention process for you? This rediscovery or the sharpening of your skills, becoming relevant and staying relevant in your field. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask in a job interview is, if you were stuck on an island for a month by yourself, what one single app would you want on your phone? And don't, you can't include a browser. I'd be curious to know what your feedback would be. What one thing, if you could only have one app, what would it be? Yes? Oh, okay. Good. So he'd want a, he wanted a, a weather Doppler uh, app. Good. You'd want Pandora over here? Spotify? Okay. YouTube? Yeah? Okay. I think that would be a good one. That actually would be one of mine. Um, yes? Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. That wins it. Get him a bar because he could, he could order a, a drone and uh, bring a life preserver and perhaps a raft. That's, that's really good. That's really good. All right. Uh, so back to, this, back to this technology graph. I mean, um, this, this opportunity that you have to live in the most amazing technological era ever is, is before you. And so how are you going to stay sharp? How are you going to stay on top of this? How are you going to take advantage of it? Not just in your personal lives of, of leisure and pleasure, but with what it is that you'll do with your vocation or how will you employ this amazing curve in what you what in what you do for the rest of your life. Um, this is one of the most famous quotes by Charles H. Duell, who you'll never remember except for this quote. He was actually stated as saying in 1899, and he is the commissioner of the U.S. Patent Office, seeing ideas across his table every hour. Finally, is about to retire because. Everything that can be invented has been invented in the 1900s. He had the audacity to say that down here. Not amazing? How about that? For, does he not need a perspective check? Right? So what do you do? What do you, how, do we make, how do we create this opportunity of change and perspective building? Well, I'm just going to offer five or six suggestions here. People do not naturally resist change. They resist the fear. It's the unknown. It's what it may lead to. It's the wandering in the fog. And if there's anything that Rich and I could share with you about being an entrepreneur, 
is that it's all about wandering in the fog. It's all about feeling your way. And you sense it more than you know it. Right? There's more, there's more of an intuition there uh, than there is a lot of data at times. And an entrepreneur is nothing more or less than filling an inefficiency that exists in the market. That's the definition of an entrepreneur. One who fills an inefficiency, a gap that's in the marketplace. And by the way, we are a weird breed of people. And those of you that are looking to be entrepreneurs, you're the only group of people I know of that are willing to work 80 hours to avoid working 40. You know what I mean by that? Can someone help explain that? Noah? Yeah, so I think what it relates to is you would rather spend 80 hours or however long it takes to create something for yourself, for something that's going to benefit you, not your employer. So, you know, yeah. you, I would give up yeah. 80 hour work week working for somebody yeah. else making them money, and yeah. I would exchange that for whatever hour it took to make myself Yeah, money. yeah, good. Thank you for that. Awesome. Uh, here's another tip tip for you. Um, identify your skills and complete them by collaborating with complementary skill sets or at least interests that you may have. This is what artists do all the time and an entrepreneur is an artist. You need to surround yourself with musicians and writers, producers and developers if that's the genre that you choose to be in. So you need to expand your personal network that way. Um, this one for me is important too. Be more, gain a perspective. Be more than self-aware. You must be environment aware. Rich and I were conversing on the way here um, about how often we will see business plans that really are centered around your specific need as a student or your specific lenses as a 20-something. And that's fine and well. But you need to consider how that idea could apply to the masses, not just to your micro environment, but more of a macro environment, okay? So perspective building is huge. And so surround yourself with people that help build perspective. This one to me is particularly critical. A mentor. Find a mentor. I've been blessed in my life to um, have great mentors in my life, not the least of whom is Rich Christensen. Um, he's been a wonderful mentor mentor to me, not just in business, but just life in general. And um, you, can, you can outsource pr potentially a lot of mentoring if you wanted to. You could probably read a lot of great books. In fact, I, I don't think that you ever should not read good books, uh, even if you have a fabulous mentor like I do. You, you always be reading, ABR and listening to thought leaders and sharpening your skills that way and disagree with half of them if you could. Really, underline the things that are important to you and question the things that you need to question so that you can develop that um, skill a, a bit better. Um, people often ask me, what is a good book to read? Um, I would throw out a few inspirational books, a few business books. I typically want to read one business book and one kind of one, one fun book. Um, I, I went through a stretch where all I read was business books and uh, just, uh, need to mix it up a little bit in the spirit of even our, our, our discussion today of reinventing yourself. Uh, Dean, just as an example, what book have you recently been reading? If you could only name one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, the last one I read was a mystery novel. Okay, good, good. Coming right from a humanities partner. That's awesome. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, and everything is a mentor. Keep that in mind. Passion. Passion is critical. Take baby steps. You're not going to know exactly today what it is that you're going to be or become. Or Some of you may, and, 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 and power to you. But take baby steps. This isn't something you have to solve all in one, one year here at SUU. But whatever you do, do it with love. Do it with passion. Um, Contribution. This is my favorite question to be asked, isn't it, Ethan? In our home, this is a big deal. And our, your 11-year-old brother, my 11-year-old son, he's got this down, finally. And that's how he'll come right up. He'll, how can I contribute? And that, is, that, that to anybody, no matter what your social circle is, family, business, school, study group, 
that's the most amazing question and actually is a question Rich taught me really early in my business career is ask, always be asking this question. How can I contribute? Okay. Um, and then intent. I think intent's a big part of defining and redefining yourself. Okay. Um, Buddha said, you are what you think having become what you thought. Well, my challenge to you this morning, and I'm actually going to just, I'm going to turn some time over to you to help me sort of flesh out the rest of my presentation. And I'll give you a, a, a kind of a, a, a tip here in just a minute. But my challenge to you this morning and for a lifetime is to never stop reinventing yourself. Seek out the music, the friends, the hobbies, the careers in your life that challenge you to be better than you were before. Give room to allow the best influences in your life to help shape and mold you to become that player, that music player, that plays the best music that life has to offer. Um, thank you. What I'd like to do now quickly is just have you share with me other things that you feel have contributed to your sort of new perspectives here at school, the things that you've done. Let me first start by um, just asking if there are any questions. We've got about 15 minutes left. Um, let's see here. Um, are there any questions about anything that we talked about? We only got five minutes? We have till 20 after? Is it to, to? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. No, no, no. Five? 1230. 1230? Okay, so we go from 11.40 to 12.30? Yeah, that's when oh, Okay, starts. all right. All right, well, we'll get out a little early. We'll get out a little early then, so. Um, awesome. Any questions so far? Any questions about this, about this idea of reinventing yourself? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. Uh, Rich, how many mentors do you have? Yeah. Concurrent at times? Sometimes concurrent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any harm in that? No, absolutely not. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I, also, I don't think you have to necessarily have it assigned. You are my mentor. One of my mentors didn't know he was my mentor for like 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was Stephen Covey, actually. Yeah. 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 Great. I read and followed. Yeah. Great comment. Great comment. Any others? Yes. Um, got a question. Um, in today's technology, it's impossible to keep up with it all. Um, likewise, for us, it's going to be impossible for us to keep up with every advance in our right. career or field. Yeah. Um, just because it, it is. So, what would you say is your advice to that as to keep ourselves sharp enough while knowing that we can't, uh, we can't have it all and be it all? What, 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 is, limiting, what is limiting you from Specialize, and what is what is it that you are going into? What what, what are you leaning towards in, as a field? Business. Business? No idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's really good. Any other thoughts about how to answer his question? What would you suggest? Life gets in the way. Yeah. One. I, yeah. I said something extremely embarrassing apparently to my kids the other day. Yeah. Night, we were talking about managing their technology because I thought they were on their phones too much and I'm trying to set up rules. I said that way, and I was talking about transparency. I want you to know something, so don't see something. I'm like that way, when you get a chat or whatever that you don't like, you know, or that I don't like, and they're like, you chat, it's not called a chat. Like, whatever, yeah. a snap, or what do you call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so part of it is my life is just busy running my businesses and other things, and so I don't keep up with the lingo of vines and chats and snaps and pics and whatever yeah. the heck these things are called. Right, you know? right. But that doesn't mean that I can't. Learn that just means that. Yeah. Yes, I just, I just yeah. not taking the time to How do you focus your attention on developing yourself? Where do you focus it to, knowing that life's going to get in the way? Yeah. Yeah. Without real, without feeling as though you're getting passed up by other people. Right. Well, the, the, it's a really great question because you really don't know what you don't know, 
And there are opportunities w where, where you may be able to go to trade shows. You may be able to, as through your mentors, glean some of that experience through reading. There, I mean, with, with today's technology, you now, I mean, if there's anything that's happened, it's the democratization of media, which means you can be super selective now on what media and what news, what topics. You can even be so selective as to just hear specific news from a sp specific journalist if you want. You can be that selective that only what hits you is something that you've absolutely customized for you to receive. And that might be one way that you can overcome that challenge is to eliminate the noise by being very selective with what you allow come in and, and, and use the technology to your advantage. I've heard it said, Rich, how does this about, about an email? Uh, uh, there are business owners that, that we've run into that say that they use their email as a tool, a, uh, as a weapon almost. Um, and they don't allow them to use their email against them because they, 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 they may send out a bunch of emails, but they're not beholden to their inbox. Well, there's no greater slave than to being a slave to your inbox, as a business owner especially, is true. I mean, you've got to carve out your day that you're spending all day responding to. The worst invention, actually, along this curve is that little, that little mailbox notification on the top right I use a Mac. That is the worst invention ever, to constantly remind you someone else wants your attention. You need to really carve out how much time you spend on email and uh, s you know, really dedicate only so much time in the day to be responsive to others', others emails. Go ahead and send out as many as you want. Use that tool that way, but don't get stuck being held back. Yes, up here and then Andy. Yeah. It's not about the sprint per se, it's about the marathon run who mm -hmm. is going to be able to keep up their right. the long run, not within yeah. a short period of time. Yeah, I like that. And if you're to prepare for a marathon, you need to have a plan. And, um, and you know that you're going to hit the wall around what, mile, Andy is in about 19, 18 to 20. You hit that wall, and I've run with Andy before, and he's, 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 a, he's a great runner. He prepares very well for his events. And there's, no matter how well you prepare, you're going to hit a wall. You just need to know that, and that's part of the plan. And that's the same thing probably in your instances, is just know that there will come speed bumps and opportunities and life will just happen. Great comment. Thank you. Did you have one more thing before we... Okay. Real quickly, I just think social media is the same problem with email. Yeah. Social media, you can use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consume all your time, or yeah. you can use it as a tool to help. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yes. Hudson, right? One thing that we need to focus on, not just ourselves, is building our own personal thing, is our capital relationships. Yeah. Because we may not yeah. be able to gain all this knowledge by ourselves, but there are other people that we can build relationships with yeah. to help us in that progress. That's right. Noah, come up and write that formula on the board. I'm putting you big time on the spot here. We're going to see if he's learned anything in the last few months. But you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> Yeah. and there's always new stuff going on, new programs, how to use it better. I find having those relationships and stuff, those people, all those people you know, will actually filter out a lot of the stuff that aren't yeah. important for you so you can focus on the important yeah. things. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in, in some ways that reminds me of a law that is just as true as gravity and it's called the law of association. You will become like the people you hang out with. How's he doing? Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting there now. <laughs> I know, so I'm texting you to make sure you remember. Some real impactful discussions. Here, here, here. Okay, help me out here. We will. Most people think that what it takes to start a business is a bunch of cash, a lot of money. It isn't true, is it? It isn't always true. Financial capital comes last, but it starts with these two very important pieces up here. Intellectual capital, what you know. Relationship capital, who you know. 
And that little plus sign in there, the big plus sign, that's service. That's adding value. So when you take smarts plus people and you add value between the two, it will equal financial capital. Financial capital. Yeah. And that's, that is the formula for success right there in business, probably in life. Okay. Well, I said we get out of here early. Thank you for your time. You've been a great audience. I mean, obviously, you came to listen to um, this for part of class, but thank you for being engaging. Um, Rich and I will be here afterwards a little bit longer. We're uh, 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 open and available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.